As the countries of the world shifted their focus beyond Earth during the 21st century, China was one of the biggest early space powers. But China wasn't satisfied with being second to the United States, and had ambitions to become the dominant power in space. They wanted to beat the Americans at Mars. But how did this happen? How did China rise to create the closest thing they could get to a space empire? And how did it all come crashing down? In the 2030s, just a few years after the Americans, China lands people on Mars. This marks the first step in the creation of Xin Qianyan, China's first Mars colony. But as other countries slowly started their own colonies in Utopia Planitia, China saw an opportunity. Travel between colonies was often dangerous and expensive, and infrastructure was desperately needed. So, construction began on the largest infrastructure project in Martian history, Paradise Road. Paradise Road connected the colonies of Mars like never before, but everyone had to pay to use it. Paradise Road quickly became just one of a developing highway system in Utopia Planitia, and most of it was owned by China. Countries on Earth and their Mars colonies paid China to use these roads, and the Mars colonies became increasingly dependent on Xin Qianyan and Hanglu, another Chinese colony. But Xin Qianyan began to cause problems for China in the 2050s, as it slowly became allies with Base Alpha, an American colony. The Blue Famine of 2050 further cemented Xin Qianyan and Base Alpha as allies, because they had to work together to keep the Martian colony of Blue Mars base from starving, and even operated a joint military base, Xin Blue, on the outskirts of the colony. This was bad for China, which was outraged that their own colony was becoming an American ally, but being hundreds of millions of miles away, they were unable to do anything about it. But China still directly controlled the trade routes of Utopia Planitia, and their colonies were making enough money off of that to keep expanding and advancing, but China has had its sights even higher. As countries shifted their focus from Utopia Planitia to Valles Marineris, or the Mariner Valley, China once again saw an opportunity. The United Nations had created a program to help developing nations make it into space, resulting in small settlements created by the United Arab Emirates and even Nigeria in the Mariner Valley. These countries would need extra help if they wanted their colonies to succeed, meaning China could once again build all the infrastructure they needed at a price. China quickly created their third Mars colony, Jiya, in the Mariner Valley, directly competing with the American and European Base Gamma colony. Most large-scale infrastructure projects were quickly built by China, as long as the colonies could pay. Almost all intercolony trade not in Martian orbit was transported on Chinese roads. As the years went by, the Chinese colonies got better and better at building Martian infrastructure, and dozens of manufacturing and construction companies came out of them. Mars became a place not just for science, but a place to live because of China. The industrialization of Mars was a direct result of China's ambitious infrastructure projects, and it led to them getting greater and greater control over Mars. It seemed like China was an unstoppable Martian power, slowly taking more and more of the planet's resources. As colonies on Olympus Mons were created, China built their largest system of roads yet, the Sailu Highways connecting the Mariner Valley and Olympus Mons, and allowing China to create a transportation network that stretched nearly all the way around the entire planet. What could possibly stop them now? Eventually, China hit what it thought would be its biggest achievement yet, control over the entire Mariner Valley. There were talks between the four colonies of the valley uniting together to form one of the first Martian countries, Marineria. The colonies agreed, and Marineria was born a few years later. China's colony, Jia, was a sizable portion of Marineria, and was still loyal to China. This meant that, if they played their cards right, China could dominate the largest country on Mars. But this is where everything began to fall apart. China had become overconfident on Mars. They assumed they could control Marineria just like they controlled the smaller colonies, but they couldn't. While Jia made up a large amount of Marineria's land and population, the other part was American, and they didn't want China to dominate their colony. Tensions grew in Marineria until, just five years after it formed, the country split apart, and Jia found itself independent and weakened. This was the first domino in the collapse of China's Martian Empire. At around the same time, Utopia Planitia began facing a crisis of its own. Hong Lu was falling apart. As China was focusing on Marineria, they'd stopped focusing on the development of Hong Lu, splitting the colony between people who wanted to become independent, people who wanted to stay a Chinese colony, and people who wanted to unite with Xin Qianyan. 
The Honglu government didn't deal with these protests well, and as 2100 arrived, everything went horribly wrong for China. Honglu suddenly found itself in Mars's first civil war, and it tore the colony apart. Not wanting a crisis on their border, Shen Qianyan began to send troops into Honglu to stabilize the situation, and Base Alpha, which had since become a full country named Alfia, did the same. Shen Qianyan and Alfia had begun to work together on military affairs, which outraged China, but again, they are too far away from Mars to do anything about it. On the other side of the planet, the colony on Olympus Mons, Olympia, suddenly had a massive crop failure, plunging the colony into a famine. Luckily, the Silu Highways connected the Mariner Valley and Olympus Mons, meaning the Marinarian countries could use them to give aid to Olympia. Jia, still in control of the Silu Highways, had other plans, and refused to let what was left of Marinaria to use them, as payback for the breakup of Marinaria. Marinaria knew that if they didn't get to the highways, thousands would starve. This was unacceptable, and they decided they would get access to the Silu Highways by any means necessary. Before Jia could prepare, Marinarian troops marched into the colony, taking it over and forcing its surrender in a matter of days. China's empire had begun to collapse. Their biggest colony, Shen Qianyan, was now an American ally and essentially at war with Honglu. Jia was now under foreign occupation. Every single one of China's colonies on Mars was involved in some sort of crisis, and there was absolutely nothing they could do about it. To make things worse, both Alfia and Marinaria were, at this point, independent from the United States and the US was no longer supplying them. This meant that China couldn't threaten the United States and have them do anything about it either. The Martian crisis of 2100 lasts five years, leaving everything China had built on Mars in ruins. Ji Ya was taken over by Marinaria, Hong Lu was totally dissolved, and Xin Xianyan had become an Alfian ally. In a matter of years, nearly a century's worth of work was gone, and the era of Chinese dominance on Mars had come to a violent end. As the next century went by, China put their focus into the asteroid belt and the moon, not wanting to lose even more on Mars. So, Mars entered a new age, free of the dominance from China and the United States. The Martian crisis of 2100 was all they needed to go from an Earth-dominated planet to a small set of new countries ready to forge their own destiny on Mars. So, while China may have lost Mars, the Red Planet emerged stronger and more independent than ever before, for better or worse. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out the rest of my Colonization of the Solar System series.